Hey there, it's Kat and this is Brews and Reviews. So it's time for a wrap up of everything that I read in June and I'm just going to get started because I ramble. You know this if you've been here before or if you're new here, sorry, I ramble. Let's get to it. So the first book that I read in June was actually a reread of my favourite book of all time and that is Legend by David Gemmell. I'm not going to talk too much about this book because I do have a full length review of this book coming up on the channel soon, eventually when I edit it. There was an hour's worth of raw footage, okay? It takes time! I may be procrastinating but like... This book is a siege book where the few fight against the many. It's basically what would happen if the greatest fighting force in the world came up against the greatest fortress in the world. It's amazing and I love it. And unsurprisingly, as it does every time that I reread this book, the last 50 or so pages had me in tears because the sadness, the sort of happiness at times, but mostly the sadness. Oh, the sadness. It's a great book though. If you haven't picked it up yet, you should definitely read it and definitely check out my review whenever it comes out. Next up I read Tao by Enid Titan. So this was an ebook that I had on my Kindle for quite a while. I think I picked it up because it sounded ridiculous, it looked ridiculous, green scaly man on the cover and I'm like this is gonna be ridiculous. Oh my god, <laughs> I was not prepared. I was not prepared for this book. It's like an alien romancing and I know you're probably thinking Ice Planet Barbarians. No, this is not Ice Planet Barbarians. That one was semi-okay. This, the main character sheds his skin a lot and then they just there was like a weird slavery thing that was very strange. And then, the kicker, the thing that makes this book just oh so much. So she gets impregnated by the alien babies, but they're like eggs. Not just like one or two eggs, like 40 eggs. Not even the worst part, to, to, to birth them, she gets in like this weird lake thing, and then they like pop out of her into the lake, like tadpoles, they're swimming around her. Oh my god, <laughs> it was so wrong. So give that one one star because um, I feel a little bit like I need to scrub my brain clean. It was, mmm, mmm. So then I decided to do a reread of Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. Obviously I am making my way through the Grishaverse so that I can finally read King of Scars and Rule of Wolves. So this was the next book in my reread and yeah, I enjoyed it. It was fine. I think that I enjoyed it a lot more having watched the show because I like the crows in the show more than the crows in the book. I think it has something to do with them being adults. Like, just age them up a little bit and a lot of this becomes way more believable and fun. So yeah, I give this one 4 out of 5 stars because it is probably the weakest book in the series for me. I just... I know that's an unpopular opinion, but I just don't find it as good as the other ones. It just doesn't hit that spot for me, so. So having said that, I then reread Crooked Kingdom. So this is my first reread since reading it for the first time last year, and I really enjoyed it. I like this one way more than Six of Crows, and I think it has something to do with the fact that more of the perspective characters in this book are more personable. I feel like Six of Crows has the trauma babies. It has Kaz, Nina, and Matthias, and none of them are having a great time. And I mean, Inez, Jesper, and Wylan are also not having a great time, but you know, they're more personable when they're not having a great time. I don't know why, it just worked better for me. I like the story better in this one, the fact that it's not like a big heist, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, I just enjoyed it more. But yeah, I gave this one 5 out of 5 stars. Then I picked up The Language of Thorns, again by Lee Bardugo. This is a series of short stories that take place in the Grisha world, so they're like Grisha fairy tales. And these were pretty cool, I really enjoyed it. But I have to say the best thing about this book are the images that are inside it. I mean obviously it's a very pretty book, you can see from the outside, but it has this thing with these borders and they grow and change as you go through the story, as the story changes. And then there are big images at the end, which which I'm not going to show you because it might spoil something that happens in the story, but they are... they're great. I give that one 4 out of 5 stars, which is really good for me because I don't tend to rate short story collections very highly and I did enjoy those. Next up I read Ice Planet Barbarians. Have you been on BookTok lately? Because I, I don't know how you could go on BookTok and not read these books because they're just everywhere. I had to know and after reading that terrible alien romance thing, 
earlier on in the month I was like I need I need to read it I need to know and I didn't hate it I'm surprised by how little I hated it it's a three out of five stars which is a very very good rating for an alien romance thing for me I don't usually rate them that highly so that is quite good it almost seems self-aware enough to not make me hate it immediately the actual romance stuff wasn't as bad as it could have been now I will say that there are like a couple of non-consent things especially a really unnecessary one at the very beginning of the book that I'm like did you need to do that no you didn't uh, so just be aware of that when you're going into it like after like I'd say two times where there's a non-consent issue it levels out and does get better so there's that. Next up I read King Beyond the Gate by David Gemmell. This is the second book in the Drenai Saga if you're reading it as they were written rather than chronologically. It takes place about a hundred years after Legend and it follows a man called Tanaka Khan who is half Nadia and half Drenai so he's kind of on the outskirts of either culture and nobody really likes him. And he's alive in the time of this crazy evil politician guy who also experiments on people and turns them into half beast half people monster things and has them ravage the country. It's not a nice time for anyone. But this is a very good book and I very much enjoyed it. I feel like this is something I repeat a lot with this book but the end is so bittersweet and it makes me so sad and tear up every single time I read it and this was no different. But yeah very much enjoyed this, gave it five out of five stars. There will be a review for this one coming soon but it will come after the legend one. So you know like probably two months at the rate my editing's going. Next up I read Malice by John Gwynn. Now I don't really know how to explain this book because I don't really remember it. It's nearly 700 pages long this book and I can't tell you half the things that happened in it because I was bored. And because I found a lot of the voices of the different characters to be so similar, I couldn't tell you any of their names. And I never had this problem with huge fantasy books. I know like there's that thing where people are like, oh, so many names to remember in so many places. I don't usually have that problem. But with this book, I was like, what? Who's this? Who? Wait, d I thought your old dad was dead. Wait, no, who's, what's happening? There was only one storyline I actually felt like I had a handle on and I felt like I knew what was happening in and it was the little boy storyline, is it Corbin? And I feel like I knew a bit about the prince whose name I've forgotten too, oopsies. It was very solidly a three star. I'm intrigued by the second one, I've heard it gets a little bit more fast paced and moves away from like the scene setting thing but like it's gonna have to pull something right out of the bag to actually make me go even further in the series. And the only reason I'm actually considering going on with this is because I actually own all of the books already and it feels like a waste when I've got all four of them to not even try the second one. I feel like I should give it a chance but I'm not like super eager to, especially because they're so long and they just get longer and I'm just really sad that this really long book that I put a lot of effort into was quite disappointing. If anyone actually knows what happened in that book, like, you can tell me and I probably wouldn't remember. <laughs> oh. Moving on to the next super weird book that I read this month. This clearly was the month for wrongness, I guess. <laughs> That's the only way to put it. These books were wrong. And this one was probably the wrongest of all wrong things. So if you watched my most recent vlog you will have heard me talk about this so I won't go into too much detail if you want to hear more about it then um, go check that vlog out. But I read The Brides of the Hanover Block by Gregor Zane. This is a sequel to The Hanover Block and that was a book that I really enjoyed because it was like one man's descent into madness and obsession with this like weird flesh alien thing. And this one was not that. Th it was tentacle porn, essentially. But then it got worse. Because not only was there like... There was... Like, they, they ate it. They would like take a bites out of it and then be like, mmm, good. And then it would like... Go in them, but like not in regular places, but like in their arm or like their stomach. And it's like, what is happening here? It's like some sort of grotesque horror bazaarism thing. But it was so wrong. It, it like it went straight into it and it was like yeah these women found this thing and they were like banging it and then eating it and then it went weird and there was like a whole mass murder thing. This book was mental. Bear in mind this book is only 112 pages long and I spent the whole time going 
I feel a bit sick. <laughs> there is an actual quote that I considered filming and pointing in the vlog, but I couldn't because I thought this video is going to get taken down by YouTube because that is disgusting. It involved a broom handle and a dead floaty man's butthole. <laughs> there you go. Please enjoy in the less grotesque fashion the quote that made me go like, you what no? Moving on, I decided to read Hotwire by Alex Carver and this is an average thriller that I found very average. But then what could compete with the madness that just came before? Nothing. This book was okay. The main character, the detective Maggie O'Dell, was okay. I feel like this is midway through a series so obviously that's not the ideal place to start this series. Do bear that in mind with my comments on it. Things weren't explained very well. I felt like the relationship between some of the characters was fine, I didn't have too much of a problem with that. I do feel like I've had previous books spoiled for me but probably not gonna pick up this entire series so it probably doesn't matter that much. I think that there were a lot of different mysteries going on in this but there was not enough behind it for me to be able to guess what was going on so I always feel a little bit disappointed when that happens because I'm like at one point you were telling me it was aliens and I was like of course it's not fucking aliens because of course it's not! Yeah that was like a weird thread that never needed to happen because and like of course it's not aliens because this isn't a sci-fi book. Anyway I gave it 3 out of 5 stars and it was fine. Just an average sort of if you took this on holiday thriller then you'd probably leave it there. I also finished The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemison. This is a reread for me. I started it in May and it took me ages to read it because I like to read this one slow. It's very depressing if you read a lot of it in one go and I did not want to do that to myself because there's a whole lot of things about slavery and it's not a good time. But I do really like the end of this book and I really like where it wraps up so I am very eager to start the next one. I am procrastinating it though so if you could yell at me in the comments to read the obelisk gate then I may actually do it because I really want to but I'm also like oh it's gonna be depressing again isn't it <laughs> it's gonna be a sad time but please yell at me to read that also I gave this one a four out of five stars this time which is an improvement from last time when I gave it three out of five stars so I definitely enjoyed it more on the reread then next up I read Tarnished of the Stars by Rosie Thor this book was presented to me as a Sapphic Lunar Chronicles and I thought oh that sounds good it's sort of a steampunk alternate earth type planet where tech has been outlawed but there's a disease that makes people have to replace their hearts with like technological heart ticker things and I wanted it to be cool it sounded like it could have been cool but it wasn't it was very YA. Maybe I'm just a little bit too old to have read it. I don't know that probably affected it but I kind of felt like one of the three perspective characters just didn't even need to be there. He was so irrelevant and I just was like why are you here? I felt like I knew every single thing that was gonna happen and I did predict pretty much everything that was gonna happen. I suppose the only good thing I have to say about it is it's got a good sapphic relationship and it also has a strep so if you're looking for a book with that in then maybe try this one. And the last book that I read in June was Nimona and this was again a reread for me. June was a very heavy reread month for me because I just wanted to reread stuff so yeah. I read this graphic novel about three years ago and I've just recently been having the urge to pick it up again so I did. It's about a shape-shifting villain sidekick and uh, it's just fun. And then at the end it's kind of sad at different parts but I like it. I like the art style and I think it's quite cute in a lot of places. So yeah this was fun. I think I originally gave it five stars but on this reread I gave it four stars because I think I've got a lot more graphic novels to compare it to that I know that emotionally involved me a little bit more than this did. So yeah those are the books that I read in June. What did you read in June? Did you read anything quite as gross as I did in June? Because I would like to know so that I can avoid those things because I have had enough for a lifetime. So if you made it this far into the video and you don't have anything to say then please leave me a throwing up emoji because yeah. If you like this video please leave a like, comment, subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!